What you're seeing in these forests around here is the effects of four years of drought. You've got acres upon acres, square miles upon square miles of drought weakened trees. And it's basically a feeding frenzy for bark beetles. In a healthy forest, the bark beetles don't get so out of control. Trees will use their natural defense mechanisms, and that basically is that when the adult beetle bores into the trunk of the tree to lay their eggs and produce their offspring, the tree will pitch out, which is the sappy material that's in the cambium, and they push the beetles out through the holes that they were trying to get into. What I have here is a piece of ponderosa pine bark, and as you look on the inside, you can see the effects of the western pine beetle. A lot of people remember its name because the galleries that it leaves look like spaghetti, so you can call it the spaghetti western. Each one of these large holes is an exit hole. This is where a beetle has gone on to thrive in another tree. And so when you see these galleries like this, that's basically cutting the cambium layer up into a million pieces, girdling the tree, and killing it. A healthy tree that has plenty of access to resources, sunlight, water, nutrients, will have ample sap. Now, once you start getting a tree that's stressed in any of those areas, their ability to pitch the bugs out is greatly reduced. Well, aesthetics was the, the main reason that we bought the property. It was a, a large piece of property and it was kind of natural, natural and it was national park-like almost. And we selected this. This is a little bit over 4,500 feet in elevation. We're about 35 miles out of Fresno. Anyone in California, particularly in the mid-elevation belt, understands drought because it's, it seems like it's a cyclic thing that comes about once a decade. And they never seem to be one-year droughts. They always seem to be multiple year. They stress everything. We've been working with a registered professional forester, uh, trying to put some kind of a plan together to manage it. And, and in the middle of that, of course, the uh, bug infestation hit. An RPF's responsibility is basically to have good communication with the landowner and know what it is they want to get out of this land and then sometimes guide them. I call what's going on here uh, fire suppression caused and drought triggered mortality. Had we managed the land properly and without removing fire and by thinning the forest where we could, then the stocking levels would have been quite a bit lower. It was overstocked and way over the carrying capacity of the land. So when the, when the drought started, that just stress the trees you know significantly and basically the bark beetles had a field day. You have these little nuclei of damaged timber that start popping up and it starts to look like little yellow spots in the forest and then you look back a, a month later and they're bigger and then you look back six months later and they're contiguous and they're starting to move across the landscape and that's we watched that happen here. When you talk about tree removal around here, there's going after it and trying to get rid of the fire hazard, which is you know going after the brown, and then there's trying to get ahead of the bugs a little bit. And so you're looking for those brown patches where the bugs have started, and you're not only going to take out the brown trees, but you're going to remove any, any trees in the surrounding area that show bug activity where you can see where the bugs have infected those trees. Really to get ahead of the problem, you need to be cutting those green trees. We've had to turn away from aesthetics and focus on fire right now. And so our job, as we see it right now, is to try to get the, the property as fire safe as we can so we avoid that crown fire that, that kills the 500-year-old oak trees and everything else. There's a whole lot of reasons for having ongoing management, but in order to do it properly, you really do have to have some kind of a plan. And that plan needs to be developed not just according to your own level of understanding, you really do need professional help in the development of that plan. I, I feel for people like Dale because they're trying to do the right thing. They're going out, they want to manage the land. But if we don't all get together collectively and have the same goals, then you're just kind of fighting an uphill battle. Most people would agree that this is unprecedented. So looking out into your forest planning, we really are looking at reforesting just a vast, vast hundreds of square miles of forest. The forest is gonna be here forever and we're gonna be here for a short time. And so the object to me is to try to leave it in a condition that it isn't materially and permanently changed. 
And so my wife and I, we're interested in the wildlife, we're interested in the trees. Managing it properly is something that's important to us.